Welcome to the podcast today, book nerds. Today we're going to be interviewing Naz Katoop. He's the author of The Loophole. A little quick synopsis here. Your wish is granted. This young adult debut is equal parts broken-hearted love story, epic myth retelling, and a world journey romp to find home. Sai is a timid 17-year-old queer Indian Muslim boy who placed all his bets of happiness on his boyfriend Farooq, who then left him to try and fix the world. Sai was too chicken to take the plunge and travel with him, and is now stuck in a dead-end coffee shop job. All Sai can do is wish for another chance, although he never expects his wish to be granted can't wait to get into this interview today and without further ado let's talk to Naz about the story all right book nerds welcome to today's podcast today I'm joined by Naz who's the author of the loophole welcome to the podcast today Naz hi Nari hi everyone thanks for having me thanks for joining us so to kind of get a little bit more in-depth about your writing and things like that, can you give us like a nice synopsis or summary about your book? Uh, so The Loophole is my young adult debut novel. It's about a 17-year-old gay Muslim kid who gets kicked out by his dad and he decides that since he's got nothing left, he's going to go on a journey to try and find his ex-boyfriend. Um, and so he goes on this world you know, travel thing. And he's accompanied by this alcoholic genie and the three wishes she had granted him. And together they they travel and they go on a madcap adventure together and they discover their strength together. Yeah. Nice. That's pretty much it, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. So... For the story itself, I'm kind of curious. It's it's a pretty unique kind of storyline and everything, especially with like the characters' backgrounds. What kind of inspired you to write it? Um, I wanted to write a journey book and just to showcase uh, a teenager, a queer teen, just being thrust into the open world and trying to figure out how to grow up as quick as possible um because not a lot of teens have the luxury of taking their time to grow up some teens are sadly you know forced to become an adult at such a young age um i was kind of um inspired by me being homeless at 17 when i was uh, just a silly little kid i ran away from home and then i decided i you know i'm just going to try and figure out how to be an adult when I was 17 and the last yeah so I ran away from Singapore and I ended up in the US and the last month and a half I was just like sleeping on the streets Um, yeah so I wanted to showcase that this book is not as depressing as that experience was because my main character Syed gets flown around in a private jet and he gets to stay in like mansions and amazing places that the genie has access to um whose name is reggie by the way um so they get he gets to have a somewhat fun experience even though he's homeless so which again not a lot of queer teens out there don't get to experience if they get you know kicked out of home which still happens you know i think in america in the western world a lot of people here take it for granted it's not an issue to even consider but in a lot of countries out there it you know it still needs to be talked about so gotcha yeah yeah absolutely i love how it has kind of that extra representation and everything in there and i guess you could even say a little piece of your own story yeah, it has a lot of a lot of myself in it. it. Has my family in it, my mom, my dad, my sister. Um, again, you know, me running away from home. Similar parallels. The mm-hmm. getting kicked out. Um, my relation, my bad, terrible relationship with my dad. Um, and the countries I had visited. So in this book, he travels to London, Istanbul, and then to a final location that. Um, you'll find out if you know when you read the book so yeah all in search of his ex-boyfriend because they had broken up like three months before that 
and he and the ex decided he needed to find himself and so this is Syed trying to find him and trying to trying to bring him home so they can have a home together. Nice. Yeah. Gotcha. I love that. It's kind of like a little bit of romance, a little bit of a journey yeah. kind of slice of life. Yeah. So there are three timelines in this. There's the present day where he's, you know, single and, you know, kicked out and going on this journey. There's a recent past, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, previous year timeline between him and his boy ex-boyfriend. You see them like, you know, meeting each other and being on this romantic journey together and how they fall in love with each other. You find out why they break up. And also the third timeline is the genie's origin story. So they all three stories converge by the end of the book. All three timelines, I mean, yeah. Awesome. And I was as I was kind of reading a little bit of the synopsis of the book and everything, um, I guess it's kind of described a little bit as a kind of myth retelling. Um, mm. So with the genie and everything, is that kind of inspired by your background or growing up in Singapore? So I decided to do a retelling of Orpheus and Eurydice, this old myth. I mean, obviously. Gotcha. Um, it was about this man and his wife, and she dies, and he decides to go to the underworld to try and get her back. And he meets the Lord of the Underworld, and he plays beautiful music on his flute. And so the Lord says, you know, I'll let you have her back. All you have to do is walk out of hell and don't turn back once. She'll follow you just a few steps behind. Um, and if you make it all the way out, she will be with you. Uh, if you turn around, then she'll, you know, come back. You know, I'll retrieve her back to my clutches. Um, so... It's loosely based off of that, but with a genie thrown in. Because um, I grew up Muslim, and that's part of Islam, you know, the whole jinn thing. So, yeah, I think I wanted to do a mishmash of, you know, myths and folklore. So the loophole came out of that mishmash. Nice. Yeah. Have yeah. you personally kind of gotten to travel a lot um, throughout your life? Yeah. So I've been very fortunate, you know, even though I was homeless a long time ago, I did do really well. I worked in IT, hated it, but, you know, it paid really well. So I got to travel all around the world. I've been everywhere, really. So I, I, I know I've just been very fortunate and now I get to write instead of working in IT so that's yeah. awesome yeah thanks yeah when did you when did you first kind of decide that you wanted to go into writing and this was something that you wanted to pursue oh gosh um so in 2007 I decided because I had just moved to LA like a year before and I was like oh my gosh I'm gonna be a screenwriter like everyone <laughs> in LA you know Los Angeles has a million and one screenwriters and I was about to be one of them and uh, add to the pool. And I did that for four years until I found out like, you know, it's just really not conducive to a brown person. You, I'm, I was never going to get any screenplays sold. And so I pivoted and I was like, oh, this is really scary, but I want to keep writing. Am I willing to try and write a novel? So in 2011, I decided, let's just try and see if I can write a book. I can always give up and never go back into writing. I'll just stick to screenwriting. And so I took the final screenplay I'd written and I decided to, just as an experiment to see if I could do it, I reverse adapted it. I took one page of screenplay and forced myself to write three pages of prose. That took 19 months and I actually wrote 100,000 words. Wow. So, yeah, so almost two years, I wrote an entire book, which was just terrible. It was just pure caca. So <laughs> I then realized I could write a book. So then I decided to learn how to write a book. So that even though I had experimented and I was capable, it's kind of like, you know, you want to go skydiving, but you're afraid to do it. But you just want to see if you can do it and you do it and you've done it. You're like, oh, my gosh, I'm capable of not being afraid of heights. 
So I was capable of not being afraid of writing a book. And so then I, you know, went to conferences. I learned what good writing can be. I then I found out about voice and people like, oh, you have to have a voice. I'm like, what the hell is voice? And so I had written another book when I found out about this voice thing. So it took me a total of six novels before the loophole was my sixth full length novel. So it took me about seven years after I started writing novels to get an agent to, you know, and another close to two years to sell this book. So it's been quite a journey from then. Uh, so I guess I started in 2007 with screenplays, 2011 novels, and then 2022, my first book came out. Yeah, That's but crazy. I never gave up. I didn't want to give up. I enjoyed writing. I loved writing so much. So, and now here you are. <laughs> You're such and everything. It's awesome. Yeah. What a journey! It has been quite. A, it's been quite a long journey. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. incredible, though. Have you like since you've gotten into writing and like being in LA and everything? Have you had like any mentors or people that have kind of really inspired you? And Ooh, um, so the whole voice thing, I. I thought, and I think a lot of new writers think this, I thought good writing was like complicated writing, like the wordiest words, the biggest vocabulary, the most impressive, most beautiful lines of writing you could put down on the page. You know, a paragraph could take you a whole hour to like drum out. Um, and then when I found out, I just kept reading and reading. I was like, what is this voice thing? What is voice? And I finally discovered what voice was when I read Laurie Hulse Anderson's um, Twisted. Um, it was a YA. And I, was, I read it and I was like, oh my gosh, that oh my. is voice. And so after that, I decided I needed to find, I, you know, I discovered there are different, there are different things that act, amount to a voice, right? There's, the character's voice, there's a narrative voice, and then there's your voice as an author, all of that adds up to this flavor that becomes your writing, that is your, the voice of your writing. So that Laurie Hulse Anderson was so crucial to helping me without her knowing, you know, I every time I've met her, I'd be like, I will always be so grateful to you teaching me about voice even indirectly because without you I would never have gotten this book published I would my writing would have never gotten anywhere so yeah she's just been instrumental just from reading one book of hers and she's a that. wonderful human being so yeah so you've already like you've gotten a chance to meet her in person everything to you now that yeah you're yeah, I met her at a conference uh, several times, and she's always been so kind. Um, she's always been willing to listen, and, you know, she wasn't, you know, I don't think I'm stalkerish, but she's never, <laughs> ever felt, I hope she's never felt bothered by, you know, me being so appreciative of it. Um, yeah, she was just so kind. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious too, like other than writing and, and kind of doing these stories and doing like screenwriting stuff, um, do you have like a favorite place that you like to come up with your stories or a favorite place that you like to kind of sit down and write? Um, I used to. I used to like force myself to go to like coffee shops and libraries and like be outside and write outside. But then I realized that, you know, the more I realized and acknowledge that I have ADHD, the more I realize that those environments are so detrimental to my productivity. <laughs> um, so I, I just stay at home on my couch, on my desk. Um, and I just, it's hard, it's hard for me to be in a public environment and try to write there will always my brain will always be distracted by something sometimes i have to hide my phone outside in the living room um so i don't go back to it to check on stuff um i know a lot of people need that kind of like white noise um i 
try to listen to tr- something called trailer music. It's just two, three minute pieces that, uh, you know, that have no vocals um, just to get me in the mood of writing the scene. So that's like my favorite thing, just to blast that music. Um, but mostly I'm just so comfortable writing at home. Uh, yeah. And I'm a speed drafter too. So I try to write really quickly, just draft it, vomit out a draft. And that I try to do within a week. So it's hard to do that when I'm outside. Gosh, I hear yeah. you. I mean, there's so many distractions, I feel like, so especially many. if you're in a cafe and there's yeah. food. <laughs> I know, right? You hear the strangest noises, people talking next to you. So, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. My favorite place. <laughs> I mean, like outside of writing and, um, you know, storytelling and things like that, do you have any other hobbies or things that you like to do? Um... Gosh, video games. I think video games are a good escape. Uh, but it also sometimes I find the most interesting stories in narrative games. So video games, I think, help with my attention deficit, mm-hmm. you know, and just keeps my brain stimulated, I think. Um, but I'm also a fan of not doing anything, just literally lying around and just watching tv i think reading and writing take up so much brain power just the thought of summoning a plot idea and working through the kinks and finding plot holes can be extremely exhausting to the brain sometimes just letting my brain do nothing is the best thing so i think relaxing is a huge hobby of mine. <laughs> So my partner is quite hilarious because he's like, he's always wanting to go for a walk and I'm like, mm, I'm fine. <laughs> or a hike or whatever. I'm like, I'm good. I'll just, you know, hang out here on the couch or in bed. So, but we go to the gym together. So I think that's also one thing that keeps me busy. Oh, that's nice. Kind of gets you out of the house once in a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So, so, you know. I don't call it a hobby. I just call it a distraction from writing. A good distraction. So, yeah. I hear that. I mean, I'm kind of a homebody myself, so (laughs) you can really... It's fine. It's totally fine. (laughs) I'm a proponent of it. Just to kind of wrap up for the loophole and everything, where can we find your writing? Where can we find your books? Any social media sites that you have you want to share with our listeners? Uh, yeah, I'm on social media, uh, usually usually as Nas Katoop, as I'm the only Nas Katoop in the world, apparently, um, <laughs> so far. And I have a website that I am revamping, so that's kind of broken. I just started it today, but things will pop up on it randomly. Um, and I will be going to different places, like next month, I'll be going to Portland and Charleston, Portland for the Portland Book Festival, Charleston for Y'all Fest, and then I'll be going to NCTE, which is in Anaheim, which is a convention for teachers. So that's going to be very exciting. So yeah. Awesome. That's super exciting. Yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah. Oh, I wish you safe travels and everything. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, it's good. (laughs) chatting with you too thank you for having me oh of Sorry course I didn't get to chat with Jean but nice no time. it's all good I mean she said before I even got all these stuff for the interview and all the info together she was like you're gonna love him he's so sweet he's like the <laughs> nicest person I'm like oh my god I'm so excited <laughs> oh she's so sweet thank her for me oh of course definitely yeah. definitely will awesome good. thank you so much it was perfect. Well, thank you so much appreciate this Thanks of course for taking the time yeah, safe travels and everything. I thank hope you have you. a great time at all the conventions. And we'll, we'll talk to you later, hopefully. Okay, thank you. Take care. It's been such a pleasure talking to Naz today and getting to know him and to talk about his story, The Loophole. And Naz, before we go, is there anything you'd like to say to our listeners? Hi, I'm Naz Katoub, and you're listening to the Gene Book Nerd Podcast. <laughs>